you sure you'll be able to make it now? Oh, I'll be down at your boat no matter what. Okay. Her name may be unfamiliar to many Aussies, but Joyce Bullifant's face and voice are instantly recognisable. I'm on board. <laughs> During much of the 60s, 70s and 80s, Bullifont was a regular on almost every hit American TV show. She was the mother of a young Helen Hunt on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. I see you're reading Ted's article. Yeah. I just finished it. It's really wonderful. A wife telling a few fibs about her age on Love, American Style. I, I think it's time you told him the truth. <gasps> I can't. That would make me 34. She even starred in the classic film comedy, Flying High. Joyce was one of the last Hollywood actors signed to what was known as the studio system. Can you believe this? I had to do a pilot every year, and I had to do eight starring roles, and I could work any place else. Wow. And that's the last of that contract. They don't do that anymore. That was a good contract. What were some of the roles you did? It's so many, McHale's Navy, every Western wagon train, gun smoke. I love that. I mean, putting on all the hair and the long dresses and riding horses. horse. Oh, horseback riding I love. And the horse could always hit the mark better than I could. <laughs> I was always going over and back, but that horse knew just where to stop. Joyce's many roles as a mum brought her to the attention of TV producers who were working on a new family series. She signed on for a role that was almost guaranteed to transform her into a global star. I was signed, sealed and delivered to play Mrs Brady. Here's the story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. Brady Bunch producer Sherwood Schwartz envisaged Carol Brady as a Lucille Ball type character. Joyce screen tested with the child actors who would go on to play the Brady girls. And it was Eve Plum's close resemblance to Joyce that landed her the role as middle daughter Jan. Two weeks before, we'd been out shopping for the wardrobe, and I was showing Friday night, we were going to shoot Monday, the director and the producer, the wardrobe. And I came out in the first dress, and I said, this is what she's wearing in the garden wedding. Turned around, and they just went, I went back, and I changed it. Now, this is the going away suit she wears when she goes on her honeymoon. And they went, went back in the dressing room to put on the third outfit, and I thought, is that acting kind of funny? So I came out in the third outfit, and I said, is something wrong? And they said, sit down a minute. And I said, what is it? And they said, we have a problem. The problem was that the studio wanted less of a wacky Lucy character and more of a traditional TV mum like the wholesome Donna Reed. In stepped Joyce lookalike, Florence Henderson. Oh, look at me. Brides are supposed to be beautiful and I look awful. Sherwood Schwartz, who was the producer, came to the house to tell me he didn't call. And he was heart sick. It's a story of a man named Brady. And Joyce wasn't the only hopeful who missed out on a major role. I read a rumor somewhere that Gene Hackman was talked of to play Mike Brady. Gene Hackman and Joyce Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> Been what are you two doing here? Well, he wouldn't go to sleep without you. <laughs> Besides, I figured someone ought to look after the kids. <laughs> hey, good thinking. To counter Joyce's comedy skills, the role of the housekeeper was originally written as a straight man role. Producers had to rewrite the Alice character to counter the new Carol Brady. Everything happens for a reason. I totally, absolutely believe that. And Florence went on to do a beautiful job. And they got that wonderful housekeeper, N.B. Davis, was so funny. That's the way we all became the Brady Bunch. From a professional level, how did you bounce back from that? How did you keep your confidence up? You know, acting is very emotional when you're not accepted mm. and so that part was that I thought oh boy easy street oh, oh, oh. not so fast Joyce but other things came along and I I always encourage people especially young people who are going into the business be sure you have something else you can do that you can rely on and mine was doing interior design which kind of fell in my lap and I love doing that, but I love acting with a passion. I really do. But it wasn't like I'm gonna live or die if I don't get a role. 
Joyce's private life could be a hit series in itself. She's been wed five times, four of those marriages to Hollywood heavyweights. But not all had a happy ending. How on earth does someone clock up four Hollywood husbands? Just lucky, I guess. Just lucky. <laughs> Each of those Hollywood husbands struggled with alcohol abuse and Joyce has opened up about their battles in her new book. He's just a boy, Steve. A boy. Joyce was just 14 when she met husband number one, Hawaii Five-O star James Bukimdano MacArthur. I knew that he had a drinking problem, but you see, I thought, my big ego thought, well, I can fix that. You know, I'll just let him know how much he's loved, and then he won't want to drink anymore. I didn't realize that it was a disease and that I am a co-alcoholic, and I feed right into that disease. That marriage lasted a decade. Two years later, she walked down the aisle with Days of Our Lives star, Edward Mallory. He was a different kind of alcoholic. He had a very dark side to him a lot of demons and he was a big yeller and there was so much tension all the time in the house Joyce's next marriage lasted 20 years William Asher was the man behind the hit TV series Bewitched Joyce only discovered the extent of Asher's drinking after his passing. I was having dinner with his daughter and son-in-law. I said, I didn't know he had a drinking problem. He would come home after work and he'd have a, a drink, you know, with water up to here and a little splash of vodka. She said, Joyce, that was vodka up to here and a little splash of water. There was a brief marriage after Asher, and then she reconnected with an old flame, Roger Perry. And Roger's done over 300 television shows. One that he's really known for is Star Trek. Yeah. Now, I'm going to step into that thing, and you're going to transport me back to Earth. So we worked together in 1962. Wow. So we were like ships passing in the night until 2000, and then we were married in 2002. Like her previous husbands, Roger has also had to face his demons. He's been sober, hasn't had a drink for 22 years. So you've never been with him while he's been drinking? No. So, Mom, where do you want to go to lunch? Oh, you decide. I, I want to go freshen up first. Oh, OK. It's right over there. And when you get up, it's going to flush by itself. Don't be scared. <laughs> Joyce continues to work and at 80 has no plans to slow down. Well, Joyce, thank you so much for sharing some of your stories with us today. I sure go on. You could have shot me up any time. Yeah. Got that. We've got the book, and it's called My Four Hollywood Husbands. Thanks so much, Joyce. Lovely to meet you. Well, thank you for inviting me.